Um, I see that we have someone in filming. Could you please tell us who you are and who you're filming for? I'm Ruth McGrath, and I'm filming for the North Street Association. I'm sorry, your name again? Ruth McGrath. Ruth, thank you. And I apologize, but I'll be sneaking out about 20 of. Okay, we'll save all our controversial comments to our okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'll let's see. Oh, public comment. Oh, the new thing that we have around Is there anyone here who would like to speak? on the public comment as part of the agenda. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Could you identify yourself? Yes, I'm Robert Weir. I live in uh, Woods Road, Bronx. W-E-I-L? That's correct. Okay. Feel free. I think we'll offer you... We have not sort of set ground rules for this. So I'm going to um, take the liberty of the chair and give you five minutes to okay. have a say. Well, I, I, um, many of you know I'm the person who wrote one of the letters to the paper uh, uh, asking about possible reconsideration for Glendale Road as opposed to this facility uh, for the, the trash dump off. And uh, I, I continue to feel that way. I continue to feel that way because it's, it's a much bigger space. It's a much more adequate space. It gets, it, it gets the trash pickup out of the middle of town. And it also uses a piece of land which is going to be no good for to the city for any other purpose for decades, if ever. Uh, and so it seems to me that uh, given the, the crowding of this facility over here and given the, the uh, fact that you already have a bunch of trucks there and, and so forth, it seems to me that it would be much more uh, appropriate for the city to, uh, to continue to use Glendale Road for those people who wish to drop off their garbage personally rather than to uh, Hire a hauler. Uh, my family is one of the ones that we go we go there about once a month because we compost everything, recycle everything, uh, and so we're, we're not one of those causing a big carbon footprint. I actually think if you uh, make it more difficult and crowd this facility more, that uh, I know that some there's been some thought that the carbon footprint will increase with people driving further. I actually think it's quite the opposite. I think given uh, the fact that people will, will be much more careful about what uh, yeah. they need to take out there and will actually reduce really? the, the carbon footprint. And I also want to say I have no dog in this hunt because I live equidistant from this facility and from Glend Glendale Road. And, and I also uh, want to make it very clear I'm not villainizing anyone because I understand that the city has a very difficult decision to make about all of these matters. So I, I, it just seems to me, as, as I put it in the paper, it just seems to me that using this facility this close to the, the school and this close to the hospital and this size, uh, as I put it, it seems a little bit like trying to jam a size 10 foot into a size 7 and a half shoe. Uh, so I would like to um, suggest, respectfully suggest that the, the Glendale Road facility is, is much more uh, appropriate to use uh, for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is if any city ever needed to sell property, this would be the property that would sell, not Glendale Road. Uh, so, uh, that's my piece. And again, please understand, it's not meant to be uh, a slam of anybody. I, I, was, I will say I was a little miffed that all this came out before this public hearing was held. I think that maybe there should have been a little bit more discussion about that, but I understand the pressures of the business. Can I ask, um, just what, what's the date of your letter in the Gazette? Good question. Uh, I think it's about approximately two weeks ago. Yeah, about two weeks ago. There are a couple of others that were in the section, but I think it's on me in the first one, too. That's approximately two weeks ago. I'll congratulate you, Mr. Weir, because you are the first person to be able to enjoy this public comment section that we have in our meetings now. So <laughs> okay. we're sort of new at this, so given that, I'm going um, to indulge a little. One thing on ground rules, and then, um, although the city council now has a public session, it's very formal, and the committees have always been allowed to have more give and take at public meetings. I know in the committee I chair that we have, I would like to suggest that as a format here, that it not be, you know, that we can respond, which we can't when we're on the council, um, ask questions. And so that would be my suggestion. Since we're starting, we probably need to have some ground rules that we all agree on. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea, and I would like to suggest that maybe the next time we meet, we have a, a sample of some other ground rules. Sure. But, uh, I'm happy to like answer any questions you want to direct to. So if we can Go do ahead. that today informally, I'd, I'd like to. I have a couple of things. Um, one is to um, those folks who have been on the committee who were here that made that 
decision at, at some point you could summarize mm -hmm. what went on. I think um, I will address one of my concerns, but the the carbon footprint thing I think is dismissed a little too quickly. Discuss this of the drive-in situation. One of the, the in the Vision Northampton, one of the key issues is trying to bring things closer to the core, less traffic going into the outskirts in any way we possibly can do that. So if I'm going to every two weeks, I'm going to go out to Glendale Road. I don't know how far it is from my house, but it's eight miles, whatever. That's 16 miles. It's 30 miles. That's 300 miles a year. And those of us, and you seem to be knowledgeable about this, know that the carbon footprint of using a car for all the stuff I compost and I recycle, it doesn't even come close. I, it was so discouraging. I read once that one trip, extra trip, like to the airport, is my entire year of composting. So the, the, the automobile is probably the, the biggest culprit. And I, I think if there are hundreds of people, because our population is here, I think that that the carbon footprint piece is, is bigger. Do we, do we know what percentage, how, how many people in that side of town use private haulers versus people living in Ward 6 and Ward 7? I don't think we, we have that level of detail. I think yeah. the sense was is that, um, I mean, just informally, my sense is, is that the Glendale Road site um, is a, uh, maybe 20, 15 or 20 percent of the people who drop things off the transfer station. That's sort of the number I have in my head. So, and, and I'll show you that the, the decision was made largely on cost issues. One of the things that we had to look at is that the uh, cost of trash disposal has to pay for itself. And now that we don't have the landfill subsidizing the cost of our recycling and transfer station operations, we need to really be looking at efficiency of scale. And I think that we're doing some traffic studies out here. We've explored looking at the hours that were open. Um, to really try to, but it will be a, we'll see what happens when the landfill closes down, when the Glendale site closes down, in terms of the reality. But I think that we have a year to sort things out and see how they work. And extra costs associated with traffic control over here? Uh, I, I think we already have traffic control pretty well managed with the police setup that we have right now. Like I said, I think the sense is, is that the impact, there isn't going to be that much more traffic impact, but we are studying it. Clearly, Saturday mornings here, it's really busy. Everyone knows that. That's why we have the traffic detail on on Saturday morning. Uh, the, the question is, is how will the folks who usually go to Glendale sort themselves out into the traffic flow here? We don't know that yet. As you drove in today, you saw the traffic counter is up. So they are actually doing traffic counts and sort of, sort of a traffic study to figure out what the flow is going to be here. And if we need to make modifications here, we'll, we'll, we'll consider that. But I do think that the, the cost, the capital cost of what we needed to continue to operate the Glendale site and this site after the landfill close was really probably one of the determining factors that caused us to make the decision to close down Glendale. Glendale will remain open on, an, uh, on a schedule to be able to handle leaf and yard waste. Uh, we were talking about that at our last meeting and schedule what that'll be like. But all, you know, once the landfill closes down, we just simply don't have the staffing up there that we've had that has been coincidental with the landfill operation. So we're, this is a, the year, I don't want to say living dangerously, but living interestingly in terms of seeing how people behave once the Glendale site closes down. What do you have to do to the Glendale site to, to, to close it? Because that, that's the other issue. Is what if what if you are a year from now and you decide, oh my God, there is too much traffic here, and this facility is too small, which I fundamentally believe that it is. Then then are you going to have a, a greater capital start up to to reopen the Glendale site? Because that site's got to be lots of things going to have to be done to put that to bed. Well, the the big things that need to happen up at the Glendale site that puts it to bed is really the closing down of the landfill operations, which is not going to reopen. But there was the issue of needing to do some permitting if we were going to keep the transfer station open at the same venue where the landfill operates now. And we decided to avoid that cost by moving all the transfer station operations to this side. I just, I just wanted to say that as, as far as capital cost for the transfer station goes, the capital cost that the city would incur today to keep this facility open would be the same capital cost that, that you would incur three or four or five years from today, and basically it's related to things like 
purchasing of compactors and roll-off boxes and other things to collect the paper and bottles and cans and trash. So I don't see a real, when you get this, the city could decide the year that you know, maybe the board wants to revisit it to see if it makes sense to open Glendale. But it's the capital costs, as, as MJ indicated, that were uh, an important factor of consideration for um, you know, losing anything. Um, we're still um, in that time that we can open up the public session. Marianne, we're here for the public comment session. Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, I have great concerns, and my concerns are, which I'm hearing from residents, is why was there not an open public hearing for residents to come in and be told exactly what was occurring? And there was no open public hearing. That's all we did was hear it on the radio. The landfill was closing April 15th. Then two weeks after that, a mailing comes out. I have great concerns about letting us know within a year if for some reason that this site might have an impact. I'm looking at the school, how close it is to the school. I think I just heard you say something to the effect that you are working with the police department. The police do come on Saturdays, but we are looking at now six days a week. What if that traffic increases? There is more money that the police department will have to be paid. That has to be utilized. So, I don't know. I have to agree with, with my colleague in regards to traveling from one place to another. I don't know why some compromise couldn't have been made even if you opened it two days. I know I've talked with several gatekeepers. They're not happy about this at all. They do not like the idea of it all being congested at this site. So I'm having a problem hearing today. Within a year, you might know if there is going to be a problem. I think you should have this study on your hands now if you're closing the landfill April 15th, we're having a meeting today on April 8th, why wasn't this study done? We do so many studies in the city. Why wasn't a traffic study done on what we get from Glendale ran Landfill compared to what's coming in here? Are they all gonna come here? I cannot answer to that. They're going to do so. That I do know, but I'm very concerned about hearing well, within a year, you're going to let us know that, and it will be looked at. I, I think it needs to be done before that. I'm worried about the hospital, the congestion of traffic, and the safety. Well, I actually want to say I, I disagree because it seems to me, I, I've seen a lot of studies done, and they're just studies. They're just numbers. And then when reality comes, it doesn't work out like we think it does. What I'm hearing, Jim, if I hear you right, that the cost of starting this up again, of changing this, is not going to be any different than it would be right now. Did I get that correct? And so to me, the reality that we can wait a little bit of time, see if this works, maybe you're going to be right. I think it's going to be Saturdays mostly. See what happens. See if it can be resolved. I think it's great we're bringing it up. If it's not working, we can change it. That's much more valuable than an engineering study that's a traffic study that's being done. I also think it's somewhat ironic, and this is an issue that really raises my ire, so. Because I didn't think the whole landfill, closing the landfill thing was, was thought through. I went through a couple months ago before I dumped a lot of my emails from years past that I'd collected, printed, from Glendale residents. And some of those were about, and they were right. This was the one part, and if you remember, you can go back, and in the minutes I said this. Because Glendale residents, one of their arguments was, we are the ones who are taking the brunt of this landfill, and we should have a bigger voice. We have trucks coming by, we have traffic coming by. A lot of your residents wrote me saying, we can't stand the traffic here, and we're already paying for that. And now, it's like, okay, we closed the landfill. I think that was a very bad decision before there were studies done about what we were going to do. And right now, I would go ahead, do this, we at least have the option to reopen it if we need to. Well, and let's, and let's be abundantly clear that we're talking about two separate things. No, we're, we're talking, talking about, about the transfer, transfer station, station and I'm, the landfill. I agree. Level. Transfer okay. station. Landfill is off the plate in terms of reopening. Sarah. So, 
am I correct? 15% of the total residential drop-off trash is at Glendale Road? That's the sort of the rough number that sticks in my head. <clears throat> so of the 100% of drop residential drop-off, only 15% is going to Glendale Road. We don't own any of the equipment out there. It all belongs to Solid Waste Solutions. We don't have compactors, roll-offs, anything. So to open up Glendale Road, we would have to invest in all of that equipment. <clears throat> and frankly, we're worried enough about just keeping one facility open. And I talked about this back when we were in that um, the task force under uh, Councilor um, or, uh, Mayor Higgins. <clears throat> it's not clear we can generate enough income from bag fees to make this work. Now, one of the things that um, was implicit in the original numbers, where it looked like maybe we could do two, were uh, windshield stickers on the order of 60 or $70 a year. We're, we're way under that, and I suspect if we tried to raise the stickers back up to $75 a year, we'd hear from everybody. <clears throat> it just isn't the kind of money in a pay-to-throw system, we don't believe, to support two. In fact, we're frankly a little worried about supporting one. If we're too, um, if we go too high on the fees, we're going to drive people into curbside pickup or do so. How are you going to handle handicapped parking? I think Ruth has some questions to yeah, ask. Yeah, I would, I would love I think we, we are probably wrapping up the public comment session. Oh. I, I would like to. Well, this actually this is on the agenda, right? Really. Yeah, the Glendale closing is on Glendale Road oh. closing is on the agenda. The first item on the agenda. I'm willing to open up the regular yeah. agenda and move on. If Could we, we do that? that. Yep. Okay. Uh, then I'm. Is is was there handicapped parking on Glendale Road? Well, we don't have handicapped parking but it's set up for handicapped disabilities, where people, there's a ramp where they can access uh, bringing their trash in and so forth. But we have had Ruth on our Committee on Disabilities who's come to this site and has taken several pictures of what's occurring with handicapped accessible, with the, with the um, handicapped signs. So Ruth, why don't you talk about that? I have talked can to I, the- Can I um, actually suggest that we move on and get a very brief um, she shut me off. Update from the Glendale Road in terms of the operations, in terms of what we're looking at, and then we'll take concerns afterwards. Sounds fine. Okay. Jesse, since you um, suggested that this be on the on the agenda, I'm going to let you make the decision about how you want to proceed with this. Oh well, I I I asked to have it put on the agenda based on based on Rob's questions. I mean, this is this is why I mean, the discussion we were just having is, is the reason why. So. Do we want to go ahead and ask uh, Jim to do a, just a brief briefing on the game plan? I think people have probably seen the materials that came out. The game plan in terms of the transfer station operation and the landfill itself? Yeah. The, well, the, the Glendale Road <laughs> closing, the game plan is the landfill closes down on the 15th. At that point, we then transition to the transfer station being operational here on the Mocha Street. And do we make a decision about the leaf and yard waste? The leaf and yard waste uh, schedule is something that we're working on and present to the board on Wednesday night in terms of the dates that the transfer station at Glendale will be open for our residential use for leaf and yard waste drop off. Um, Glendale Road will continue to be open on Saturdays to accept difficult to manage wastes like scrap metal and mattresses, um, refrigerators, tires, bulky plastics. And then, do you want to give us an update on terms of our, our thoughts about how we're going to manage the new road here on Oakley Street? Uh, we're making some safety improvements out, uh, yeah. out there with uh, new <coughs> signage and um, we've got some pedestrian crossing signs you may have seen when we came into the meeting tonight. We have, uh, we're doing traffic counts right now so that we can actually uh, measure the increase in traffic after April 15th when we start to see uh, people that use Glendale Road come up to Oakley Street so we can 
get a better sense of what the distribution is, more traffic on Saturdays or during the week or whatever the circumstances, so we'll have some data in that regard. Um, we are looking at issues associated with uh, handicap uh, operations out here at this facility to make it a little bit easier for people to park and to be able to use the facility. Um, but I think we've covered it pretty well in terms of the vast majority of residents that use the drop-off centers use this one right now. So we're not expecting some astronomical increase in usage out here. It's about 15% of folks that we're anticipating at least maybe more on Saturday than the week, but we'll find that out and see how it goes. The percentage of people that use the transfer, you said about 15% use the one at, at Glendale Road. And that's me quoting sort of what my vague memories from what Karen has told us. That's my, that's, I want to know that that's yeah, the right. source. I'm not. Yeah, 15 20%. I mean, it's clearly a you know, small amount of minority. Hey, because I, um, I've gotten an enormous bunch of emails in the last couple of weeks about the closing of the Glendale facility for transfer. And um, I just, I try to answer them as best I can, but there's a lot of concern about closing the, the facility, um, which I'm sure we anticipated, um, but I didn't anticipate quite so many um, emails and, and letters, actually handwritten letters. How long have you been working on landfill issues? Oh, it never ends. <laughs> it's constant. Anyway, but uh, that's, I'm just throwing it out there. There is a lot of concern out there. and. Um, I was uh, kind of amazed. I got handwritten letters from, which I haven't seen a handwritten letter in years. Okay. Yeah. I, I think Terry summarized it really well. But our, yeah. our challenge was, how do we put together a program where we can we can come up with reasonable sticker and bag fees for the residents, and also remain competitive with facilities like Dusos um, on Route 10, and. The only way we could see to do that was to end up with one facility open. We couldn't run two. And, be, and, and as Terry pointed out, we needed to make capital investments if we decided to continue to run Glendale Road. And that's actually what our, got our committee started was we were resistant to, to do that. And then when we saw the split on usage, um, we, we also struggle, and, and, and I guess we've done it in these committees, but certainly at regular board meetings, with the congestion. And we'd like a better place. And everybody knows we've been trying to move next door, and that looks like that's not going to happen. So it's not like we picked um, a solution that everyone was really happy with. We picked the one that we thought made the best sense financially and would provide the least disruption to the most people in the city. And, and I think if we try to run two facilities, we, we, our committees use this death spiral uh, analogy. If we raise our bag fees too much, we're going to go up. But if we raise them too much or if we raise our stickers too much, we lose more people. We lose more people, then we have to raise our costs more to cover our fixed costs. And I think shortly we'd be out of business. So we're, we're making the best shot we, we think we can at, at keeping this open and providing the service, which is... I think a really attractive, low-cost, solid waste disposal service for the city. Um, uh, you can't get this option in anywhere. Uh, anywhere. I think it was Terry that coined the death spiral phrase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's what I wanted to say that just in the last two weeks or so, I've gotten as things get closer, there's more concern. In the last two weeks, I've gotten more and more emails, and people are starting to figure, try to figure out just exactly what they're doing and whether or not they were actually notified or, or whether they had uh, input or whatever. Um, but those are the, that, that, that's the gist of the letters I've been getting. So. Jim, what would you guess the uh, capital requirements would be to set up on Glendale Road? Compact or roll-offs? It's close to $100,000. $100, now, if, just spitballing, if the city council appropriated the money to buy that equipment, if we're going to be open anyway on Saturdays for leaf and yard waste, and the equipment was all sitting there ready to just throw your bag in, would that work? We're not going to be open every weekend. It's, it's not permitted as a transfer station. Yeah, that's it's a convenience drop-off for the landfill is what it is. So we would have to 
we have an application in front of DEP now for what we're intending to do going forward, we'd have to modify that application and take an MSW and recyclables there. And, and would there have to be somebody on site to accept it? Yeah. Well, we, we would have someone anyway for leaving the early. Yeah, so someone would be there. Because we're open on Saturday. We'll be open Saturday is there anyway. To manage the more difficult waste. Difficult to manage waste. But that would be a, a hard sell, as you know. Well, just, I mean, it's an option that you city council But if you come to the city council and say, we want to, uh, on this business plan, in this economic environment, that we're going to put out $100,000 knowing even one transfer station is a very iffy thing. And you guys have been saying that to us for a long time. I, I just offer it as, I, know, I, know. I, I hear, you did. hear from you all did. of you this yeah. concern, and I'm offering, we certainly can't come up with $100,000 at two bucks a bag. Yeah. Well, I get it. I, I threw this I out to you. My constituents are, are, are saying this to me. That's why I threw it. And I anticipated that as we as we draw closer and closer to the date of the closing, that this that this would happen, yeah. and it has, in fact, happened. But but I think we've been abundantly clear in terms of sharing with the public our game plan to close down the landfill and the question about whether or not what happens after that has been. Really out in the air. I think we were saying publicly that we would try. We are striving to keep operations as usual, but, but as we look at the thing, and I, I think quite honestly, I think the department's been really out there in all sorts of venues about landfill closing down in the middle of April and the transfer station evolving to this one. Yeah. There were ample. There were many, 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 many meetings over the years. Well, and I know Karen's been on the had been on the radio quite a bit. You know, she's doing all these other community events that have to do with reuse and recycling. We've been out there a lot. So. All right. Did you have some comments? I did. If I is it okay now? Yeah. Um, do you have handicap. Yourself, I'm sorry. My name is Ruth McGrath. I'm from Florence. Um, handicap parking out here is just about useless. I'm disabled. I have to use the handicap parking. I will say the new guys are very, very helpful, the younger guys. Uh, but to get your car down to the handicap spot, if there's any cars parked between that spot and when you drive in, you can't see the spot. So you can't tell if there's anybody in that spot to begin with. If you drive along behind the cars and there's a car in that spot, you're stuck. And you have to either back all the way out to get into a regular spot or you have to sit behind the rows of cars and wait until somebody pulls out after you unload to pull out because you can't see the handicap spot. Uh, we've had problems. Um, I go to pull in and the guy will come in to unload the Salvation Army boxes. The last time he sat in his truck and laughed at me because I had to, I had cars parked left to the left of me. I was in the handicap spot and his big old truck was right smack dab in front of me. And he was doing his logbook at that point, and he just looked at his window and laughed. Actually, actually laughed, because he's, his truck is right across in front of the handicap spot. You can't move. The boxes are to the right of the handicap spot. Um, we've talked about it at the disability committee. We have some suggestions. We're going to come forth with them. If you're talking about doing new parking, we have a disability committee that you might make use of, because we are there to help. Um, one handicap spot is not enough. I'll come in, and that spot, nine times out of ten, does have a car in it. Uh, we have quite a few disabled in this community, and one handicapped spot just doesn't cut it. Um, there is a cart that's available if that spot is full, but if you have to park halfway down the parking lot and walk up to get the cart, you might as well walk up with your trash. You know, it just, the handicapped parking out here just doesn't work. I guess. I know that they are discussing it as they're looking at the reuse in terms of trying to do some better marking of the parking spaces up there. Was a conversation last time. Yeah, the last so time I, I was here. See an improvement in it. Yeah, the last time I was here, all the plows were parked in it. Um, the time before that, I know there was an emergency and the cars were parked in it, but that was because there was an emergency and they had to get ambulances in. So I understand that one. Okay, we'll but, make a note of it. And yeah. I, like I said, I know that they've been talking about better accessibility up there for the handicapped spot. So yeah. let's hope that we see some of the changes that they're talking about soon. Okay, but the, like you. I say, use the disability committee. We're here. We're at your disposal. Okay. Okay. Are we done on Monday? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Water and sewer rate.
Okay, this is your special thing. Um, well, you, you all saw my presentation. Any questions or anything I can add to it? Or? No. I actually thought the presentation was great. It was, um, yeah, everyone seemed engaged. Yep, and it went very well. Matter of fact, uh, I even got some positive feedback on the phone that evening. Um, on my, oh yeah. Well, they, everybody was expecting a 9 or 10 percent rate increase. There you go. That's the secret. That's the secret. Starts putting out 20 percent, and when it's at 8, people are going to be thrilled. They really were. They were expecting over promise, under deliver. 9 or 10 percent. And, um, is, is this a place to talk about the ad hoc committee at all? Or, that's or a, that's, that's a separate agenda item. Okay. Do you know what the agenda is? I don't. We don't. I thought I would have my iPad. Uh, uh, Damon Rogers was more congested this afternoon than I've ever seen it. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Damon Rogers was more congested. I, what was going on? I was, going, I was coming from Amherst. No, well, I, don't I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. It's like I have to do with water and sewer Nothing to do with so Sodom. Really. <laughs> okay. That whole time getting there. Really, we're back to public I had a time. great AG. I had a really good lunch today. <laughs> there you go. Death spiral. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Damon Road, your lunch. Are we going to do any more discussion on the water and sewer? Uh, I don't think so. We still haven't approved them. Uh, there was a posting problem, but we're going to get to it the next meeting. Uh, I don't do anticipate it. All right. And then I'm going to circle around and give us the opportunity to make a motion to accept the minutes of the February. So our next meeting with the private ways with the board is the 27th of April. We have six weeks on the agenda for that day. Certified mails have been sent out. Uh, the ads were running at Friday or Saturday's newspaper. Saturday, public notices were put in. So we're all set to go and also working on the next list of six once the board sets a date. So um, you probably talked to the mayor on this too, but I spoke to him and Jesse and I have been talking about this, which is, I don't know how it affects this, but hopefully no money will have to, no additional money is going to have to be spent on private ways and that we will put this on the ballot in November. And that that's what we're, that's, the mayor agrees with that, I don't know if you spoke to him, that we try and go ahead and do that. And the last conversation I had with the mayor was to get them all on the agenda, get them taken care of. I haven't heard that he's retracted. I talked that. to him last week. So are, is this costing anything when you say getting them taken care of? Yeah. yeah. There's survey well, services, there's legal services. I'll talk to him again, but I, that was what he said. We <coughs> talked about this to say, let's just put this on the ballot. If it, we think it'll pass, everybody talk, and, and say, let's not spend the money. But the question, the only question is, if, if all of these streets, if supposing an election was held, it was even on the ballot in June, Everybody says fine, we'll put him on it, wins. Would any money still need to be spent as these streets now become public? Would we have to do any of this work? Or would we just say, hey, we have a lot of streets here where the boundary lines aren't completely clear and we're not looking at them. And if the citizens say, let those be public ways, well, someday maybe we'll get to looking at some of those lines that we need to look at. Darren? Uh, actually, that's not what the ballot would be. The ballot wouldn't change the status of the streets. The ballot would be for yeah, the citizens to approve calling them anyway. So therefore, the streets could stay just like they are. In other words, the practicality would be nothing changes. Right? Yeah. We do whatever we're doing. I just don't get, again, I'm back to the thing last time, the logic. When we're looking at money here of every penny, I mean, the kind of things we're looking at cutting and the arguments about them, and we talk about spending anything on this, I just want to pull the little hair I have out, and say, why? Why would we do this? Why are we spending a penny, one penny more? Because the last thought, pro the last thought process we went through, everyone's concerned it wouldn't pass. I've never heard, went down that wasn't my, I have, I have never heard that. I have put that argument out last meeting as well, when I said, if I went to my constituents and said, here's the argument, either we pay to have these streets on, and we can go ahead and do that, and we do this work, whatever it is, whether it's only $10,000, It'll be a lot more than that. Or we can do it by not paying any money, and we'll do it through a ballot question. That's a pretty easy argument to win. Anybody I've spoken to, every counselor I've spoken to has said, I don't, and you have the support. Most people aren't going to be concerned one way or another, but you have the support of about 30 streets 
of different people. I, I just can't. I'll, I'll put some good money down and give good odds that this thing will win. So, and if it loses, we're back in the same exact spot. It makes no sense to spend any money. Uh, so if we pass it, then we'll spend fifteen to 20000 a year plowing those streets. Well, and we're doing that now. Exactly. Yeah. And if we don't pass it, but we go ahead and do it by spending a little money now, we'll still be spending we'll spend money. Ten yeah. Right? So the only money, because the only money that we're going to be spending, in addition, is the money now that we would be spending to do whatever work needs to be done on the street. And I bet you guys can find a lot other ways to use funds. <laughs> yeah. But I had uh, three residents of King Avenue come to my house last night to talk about the letter that they received mm -hmm. on the private lane. And they wanted to know what their tax dollars were paying for and how much, what was the percentage. They, they apparently had gotten together before they no, came to my house. Can you fill us in on what their letter said? Their letter, uh, well, it, theirs wasn't a letter. The letter came from the, the Department of Public Works. Right. But they came to my house to tell me that they wanted to know what percentage Wait, of no, their okay. tax. Well, what did the DPW give oh, us it said, in their letter? It, it was, it was a, gene a basic yeah. letter that went to everybody that had a private way that said whether or not they were going to be plowed this year or Okay. Well, I can't remember the exact. Got a public notice for the hearing coming up. Gotcha. Right, and it was just that um, they wanted to know percentages of what their tax dollars paid DPW for, and how much could they get a break if they didn't have their street plowed. The age-old argument is, what am I paying for? Um, and I explained to him. I says, uh, I do believe. I says that your street will be plowed like it always has been. I says, I just there's just issues. There is. So could you tie that into the ballot question thing? What I want to know is, the law says that we don't spend public funds on private property. Yeah. Will the ballot question handle that? The, yes. The wording is actually explicit in the uh, statute. It yeah. is. Yeah. So as long as it handles it, I'm happy yes. with it. And I don't believe, I don't believe that that question would fail. I believe it would pass. The only reason it didn't go on, remember, was that whole conflict about putting it on the, the, the ballot and the Secretary of State. It was the Secretary of State giving David wrong information yeah. that David still comments on yeah. continuously. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but, but the, the, the way the, the question will be written, if you wrote the question that said, can we spend your money on private property? You know, it has to be, it's, we won't get into the question that went before, that we thought was maybe not questioned quite or put together right, but I think if it's questioned or if it's printed correctly, I don't believe it will fail. But it has to have something in it that says we're going to spend this damn money anyway. How much did it come? It was twenty-two thousand dollars or something like that was the total that we spent on private way plowing. It was a rough paper back when that calculation was like seventeen thousand dollars, which is based on road mileage yeah. and the an annual budget of eight hundred thousand dollars a year. So some of the things that you lose out on this is that if they become public ways, we get an increase in Chapter 90 funds. That's part of the allotment. It's how many miles of road which you have that are public and, and do you public have a figure, ways. any kind of figure on it's that? It's probably about 15,000 if we accept all of them because there's about three miles of private ways. When we discontinued Turkey Hill Road, it was 2,600 feet of discon discontinuance. We lost about $2,500 a year based on that discontinuance. And, and again, we're back to we don't know what the figure would be. I mean, if you guys have already spent 90% of the money on doing this work, all right, but it, we don't know what it'll cost, right? We could run into, it's kind of like a renovation. We could run into a street here that has all kinds of complexities. Mm -hmm. It's possible, may not, right? So that's why when I asked you last time, I think you were giving me 